Hello there, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And today I want to extol the virtues of the humble cardigan, a garment which many of us men have had in our wardrobes for the entirety of our lives. It seems like a humble garment. It's something we may have worn as a small child and we tend to wear throughout our whole lives, but we don't really give it a great deal of thought. We don't really think much about the cardigan. Just to remind us what a cardigan is, it is generally a sweater which has a front opening which is either fastened by buttons or a zipper in the modern era. And the reason why I think the cardigan is an item which all of us should consider in our daily wardrobe, firstly and foremostly, is its flexibility, but more about that in a moment. Now the cardigan offers warmth and of course quite a bit of style. It can be found in a variety of different materials, although generally woolen is the route that most of us tend to go. And it has the ability to blur the lines between formal and casual to a degree, a bit more than I think you will imagine when we give it some thought. Now I've been an avid cardigan wearer since I was a very little boy because my mother, who was quite a talented home knitter, used to knit for me all my little sweaters and other garments when I was young. But very often, the, the, the garment she would knit for me was a cardigan. And I remember fondly, right throughout my childhood, even into adulthood, my mother would occasionally present for me a cardigan that she had knitted up over those cool winter months when she was, you know, spending time in the evenings knitting away in the corner of the room with those knitting needles. And uh, I still own one of the cardigans my mum knitted for me all those years ago. But aside from being a reassuring memory from the past, the cardigan has got quite an interesting history. Now, the name cardigan traces its way back to a chap called uh, John Brundinell. I think I've got his name right. He's more commonly referred to as the seventh Earl of Cardigan. So he was a nobleman in Great Britain and uh, he was a noted soldier. Now, it is said that he uh, discovered or invented the cardigan when a garment that he was wearing, which had tails at the back, a bit of a tail coat, uh, the tails caught fire because he got a bit too close to an open fire and they burned so he had to cut off the tails and hence the resulting garment became something which ended up with his name, the cardigan. But we know for sure that the cardigan stems from the very popular knitted waistcoats and other garments which were favoured by British military officers during the Crimean War. Because it was a very cold environment where um, the forces of the UK were fighting uh, the Russian forces at that time. And very cold, it was the year, the conflict in which Florence Nightingale, the world famous nurse, came to prominence. Uh, but as I say, very cold, so people dressed for warmth. And the garment was often seen worn by the seventh Earl of Cardigan. Now he grew to notoriety because he led an ill-fated military expedition called the Charge of the Light Brigade. And through his notoriety, when people saw him wearing that knitted woolen garment, it became known as the Cardigan. And that's where it got its start in common use. Later in the last century, um, no lesser fashionista than the French designer Coco Chanel, she started uh, favouring the cardigan in many of her collections. And that said to be because um, she was such a personal image conscious person that she hated pulling sweaters over her head because they would mess up her finely manicured hairstyle. So instead of wearing a sweater, she favoured garments which could be uh, buttoned up the front so they could be slipped over the shoulders. You don't have to pull them over your head so your hair stays all where you left it. Uh, and as she favoured that garment, she introduced them into her collections and they became part of common use from that point on. Now, one of the reasons why the cardigan 
grew to popularity was certainly because of its flexibility and its versatility in your wardrobe. Whilst they generally found in wool, they can be found in different gauges of wool. So you can have really chunky cardigans, you can have really fine knit cardigans, so they can be worn across the broadest spectrum with other clothes. They're great for layering. If you've got a fine knit cardigan, it can even be worn under a suit as a vest or a waistcoat, adding that extra layer of warmth in the cooler times of year. Or at times like this, when it's sort of autumn, it's quite cool, it can be worn as the primary garment, as I'm doing today. Um, you can even substitute them on occasion, if it's not formal situations, in a way you might typically wear a tweed jacket or a sports coat or a blazer, you may choose to wear a, a nice cardigan instead. Um, I often do, because the beauty of the cardigan, depending on the type you get, you can wear it with a t-shirt, as I am now. I'm really casual, I'm wearing a pair of chino trousers, and I'm wearing a t-shirt under my cardigan. However, if I wanted to go out this evening to a friend's house for a game of bridge, or maybe a couple of glasses of vino, I could just throw on a shirt with a collar takes my level of formality up just one little click on the volume counter. If I wanted to go a little bit more formal, I could wear a tie. And again, it would almost take the place of a tweed jacket. So it has the ability to be dressed up and dressed down in a number of different situations. And that is rare in a garment where it has that level of flexibility. Now I know over the years, the cardigan has got something of a reputation of an old man's garment, maybe quite conservative, something you'd expect to see somebody wearing in the golf club after a round of golf or something of that nature. But I think if you look back not that far, you will find they've had a bit of a style bump from time to time. None other than the King of Cool, Steve McQueen himself, he was often seen sporting a cardigan of some kind uh, in his movies and also in his private life. And in the more modern era, we've seen Daniel Craig wearing um, cardigans, shawl collared cardigans, whilst playing the character of James Bond and again in his own private life. It is just such a flexible garment. It allows you to wear them in a whole host of situations. Now I know what you're thinking. What is that lovely cardigan that you're wearing, Ash? Don't worry. I'm going to tell you. This is an engineer model cardigan, which is produced by my favorite woolen manufacturer, North Sea Clothing. And just uh, an advisory here, I am not sponsored by North Sea Clothing. I buy their products myself out of my own money. So don't think there's any ulterior motive for promoting this garment. I am merely showcasing something to you which I wear and love myself. Now I've been wearing garments from North Sea Clothing for a number of years. I've got a couple of their other um, shawl collared cardigans and last season I purchased a Submariner sweater and they've all been fantastic. North Sea Clothing have been around for a few years now and they trace their history back to London's Portobello Road Market. And they started off by selling um, military surplus submariner sweaters, very popular, very, very practical garments. And over time, they started to commission uh, more woolen garments as their notoriety and fame as a purveyor of excellent woolen garments grew. Now, I got on board a couple of years ago with North Sea Clothing. Incidentally, they ship throughout the world and I think they make the most amazing woolen products. All of their stuff is made from 100% British wool and they are all finished to the highest possible standard. Now this particular garment is the Engineer cardigan. Different some of, from some of their other models by the fact that it has quite a flat collar. I own some of their shawl collared cardigans and they are absolutely great, but they're difficult to layer under other garments. So if you want to wear your, gar your cardigan under, say, um, a barber jacket, when you've got a shawl collar, you've got to really negotiate that rather large collar on the cardigan. With this type of cardigan, with no collar as such, it's very easy to layer. And as you can see today, worn with uh, a t-shirt, casual as you'd like to be. Now, as I say, some very good attributes to this particular cardigan. It's made of five gauge wool, which means the wool is very tightly woven. It really feels robust and sturdy. 
and I know through my experience with North Sea clothing, they're going to last for many, many years. They're designed for many years of longevity. Um, what else can I tell you about them? Well, they've got these thick ribbed cuffs and also around the waist, which means they fit the body rather well. And with the cuffs, they're easy to get the right size because you can ju just turn them up for whatever arm length you have. They've got an inset shoulder, which means the shoulder uh, seam sits on top of the shoulder, which I think gives you quite a, quite a solid and sharp silhouette. Doesn't have a raglan shoulder where the shoulder sort of drapes over the shoulder. It gives you quite a clear cut silhouette, which I think works rather well. The buttons are natural corrosive nut, and I think they are ideally uh, color matched for the garment itself. Really lovely piece. Couple of deep pockets at the front if you want to slip your mobile phone in there or whatever you like. But what I like about it, it fits the body wonderfully. So beautiful fitting, lovely and warm, insulating layer against your body. Really does work a treat in these cooler months. As I say, these cardigans are designed to last many years uh, and hence, you know, a really high quality product comes with a price which is proportionate for what it is. This engineer cardigan, which incidentally comes in a variety of different colours, but I've opted for this light grey colour because I want it to be wearable across the widest range of my other clothing. So I've gone for what one might describe as a neutral colour. But this garment costs 265 British pounds. Now initially you think, wow, that's a lot of money for wool. But as I say, 100% British wool, well made, incredibly well manufactured. And I know through my experience with the brand, they're going to last for years and years and years. And as I've always said, I don't mind paying good money for a good product. What I don't like is paying over the odds for something which doesn't deliver what it promises. And I have to say, with North Sea Clothing Kit, it always delivers and it is superb. So there you go. I love wool at this time of year when it gets cold. I know I'm ready to take on the elements. Not just that though, but I look sharp when I'm doing so. And that's an important thing too. We all want to look our best at any given moment. And I know I do when I'm wearing a lovely cardigan. So I hope you've enjoyed this gallop through the history of the cardigan and a bit of a showcase of my favorite new cardigan for the 2022 season. If you have enjoyed the video, don't forget, give it a thumbs up, click the red button if you'd like to see more reviews like this. And if you'd like to practically support the channel, you can just buy me a coffee. And the notes explaining how to do that are in the show notes below. And don't forget, you can join my buy me a coffee page without actually buying me a coffee. And then you can benefit from the short podcasts I upload to the buy me a coffee membership page every few weeks. So if you like the content I deliver here on YouTube, pop along to the buy me a coffee page I have for free, doesn't cost a penny, and you can hear more of my musings on the world on that channel. So, until the next time, take care of yourselves, stay sharp, but stay warm in these cooler months, and I will see you again very soon. <laughs>